Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with the world's most beautiful melodies. And we've done a lot of them, and we're going to do a lot more because the world has a lot of beautiful melodies. And this was suggested by one of the commentators. Thank you very much for your suggestion, good sir. He suggested that we give a listen to the second movement of Ernest Bloch's Baal Shem. Sweet for violin and orchestra. It's wonderful, beautiful, beautiful piece. You know, I, I always jump at the opportunity to play some more Ernest Bloch because he is one of the great unacknowledged masters of 20th century music. He was particularly gifted um, in writing orchestral works, of which there are a considerable considerable pile, a wonderful, wonderful composer, full of spontaneous, passionate expression, who is, he always gets overlooked, and I'm not quite sure why. Part of it, I think, was the fact that he was kind of rootless, in a sense that, you know, he, he was Swiss, and then he was sort of bipping around Europe before he came to the United States in the 19 teens or 20s or so, and then spent the rest of his life here. He was a, a not exactly conservative, but his style had several different aspects of it. There was the Jewish stuff. There was the Chinese stuff, because he liked Chinese. <laughs> there, was, there was his modernist stuff, which was rather like Bartok or Honegger or that kind of school. Uh, especially Bartok, I think, but it, it was his own voice. It was always his own voice. Some pieces are quite popular, the Concerto Grosso Number no. 1, which is marvelous, and his his cello concerto symphonic poem, Shalomo, is quite, quite well known, although it never gets played anymore. You never hear about it, and I haven't seen recordings all that recently. It, it, it's such great, solid, wonderful music. It's squarely in the Francian French tradition when he writes sort of big works. They're usually in cyclical form. And it, it, there, there are masterpieces sprinkled liberally throughout his oeuvre, which we really ought to get to know. Um, and one of them is Baal Shem, which is actually fairly well known, at least it's frequently recorded. It's not played all that often in the orchestral version because it's only about 15 minutes long, and that makes it difficult to program because it's not like a big concerto. Of course, there is his big concerto, a magnificent violin concerto that he wrote for Sigetti. It's a fa fantastic piece. But uh, th this is, Baal Shem is subtitled Three Pictures of Hasidic Life for solo violin and orchestra. It was written in memory of his mother, um, and it's, it's really just lovely. Baal Shem, by the way, is short for Baal Shem Tov, who was the Hasidic rabbi credited with founding the Hasidic movement. He was a mystic and a visionary, and as is typical with most mystics and visionaries, not much is known about him, except lots of apocryphal stories. Um, certainly, he would not have been familiar with the violin piece, though he lived around, he lived in the, in the 1600s, and I think early 1700s, somewhere in there. But this is, this is quite lovely, and the central movement is called improvisation. Nigun. Nigun is Hebrew, it just means melody. And, and what a melody this is. And it is an improvisation. It's extremely improvisational. Like most improvisations, it starts at point A and ends at wherever and kind of winds its way along. And the fact of the matter is, it's one magnificent thread of melody. And the problem with one magnificent thread of melody is there's no place you can break into it. I can't exactly play you the tune because the tune is a six minute long melody and it just keeps spinning itself out. On and on it goes. So you can't really chop it up into bits and you're not going to go away humming it particularly, but while you're in it, it's the most magical thing in the world. And there's so there's nothing, there's nothing for us to do but play the whole thing, all six and a bit minutes of it. Fortunately, there's a splendidly marvelous recording on Naxos of, of the three major works for violin and orchestra of Bloch, which you really should own if you don't. It features violinist Zina Schiff, who wrote also extremely intelligent booklet notes 
she knows what she's talking about and she knows what she's playing and that's pretty cool and it features the Royal Scottish National Orchestra under the redoubtable Jose Cerebriere, who's wonderful in this kind of music. And uh, so here's the entire improvisation, the second movement of Bloch's Balshem. <laughs>
quite splendid, isn't it? It's magical. It's mystical. It's it sounds Jewish, Eastern, Slavic, exotic sort of thing. I think also one of the reasons that Bloch was kind of ignored is that his his Jewish style, which is often derided as just sort of late romantic exoticism of the Rimsky-Korsakov variety, and yes, in a way, it is. Not that there's anything wrong with late romantic exoticism of the Rimsky-Korsakov variety. I happen to think it's fabulous. And, uh, you know, and I, most listeners do as well. So I don't think that's an issue. But, but that kind of style, this kind of music was sort of soaked up by all those Hollywood film composers for those 40s and 50s epic, epic Bible picks. You know, it made some great scores. I mean, Nicholas Rasha made a whole career out of writing like this for like Ben-Hur and there were all those other movies that had sort of a vaguely religious content because they took place in the biblical period. But, uh, you know, first of all, nobody watches those movies so much anymore, although Ben-Hur, of course, is a classic. But, you know, m most of the others people don't watch too frequently. And, and I, I think that there's a new audience that can listen to this music for fresh ears. And film music now is respectable. People don't just consider it, you know, Hollywood trash, because it never was. I mean, it was a terrible thing to call at the beginning. I mean, there were some magnificent, magnificent composers writing fabulous, fabulous music for those splashy Hollywood cinema spectaculars. And 1923, of course, predates all of that stuff. And so you can't blame Block, <laughs> you know, for sounding like that. They sounded like him, not the other way around. So let's give credit where credit is due and enjoy these works by Ernest Bloch and particularly his the works of his so-called Jewish period, which include Voice in the Wilderness and Shlomo and the Israel Symphony and this thing, <laughs> this whole disc, the violin concerto, Baal Shem and the Sweet Hebraic. Gorgeous, gorgeous music. And this is a fabulous performance by Zena Schiff with the Royal Scottish National Orchestra under Jose Cerebriere on Naxos. Keep on listening, folks. Thank you for joining me.